in the Marine Corps and an expert in con constitutional law. The last 12 years of his law practice has been dedicated to defending religious liberties, the freedom of speech, and the right to life in state and federal trial and appellate courts all over the country. Mr. Meese is exceptionally equipped to speak on the topic of religious freedom and the Constitution. He is the co-founder and senior counsel of American Freedom Law Center. He has a table up front here to, with information. And uh, we've both been involved with Personhood USA. I'd like to also add he's a father of 12. Oh. And And, uh, and, a, and a grandfather of one who is on the way. And also, he and my husband went to Naval ROTC together in Massachusetts. <laughs> Please help me welcome Robert Meese. You know, it's, a, it's indeed an honor, it's a privilege to be here. You know, as uh, Rebecca indicated, I, I've been dealing with constitutional litigation now for my, the last 12 years of my life, mostly doing religious liberty cases. So I'm used to talking before a group of hostile judges. It's nice to be here before a God-loving, patriotic, flag-waving Americans like all of you. Rebecca talked a little bit about my background. I am a, a father of 12 children, so yes, I am Catholic. As I like to say, they're all boys but 10. So the motto in my home is, blessed are you among women. I also served on active duty in the Marine Corps for 13 years. That was an honor and a privilege. My dad was in the Marines, he fought in the Korean War. My older brother was in, was in the infantry and the Marines enlisted. I was an infantry officer in the Marine Corps for 13 years and my younger brother was a captain in the Marine Corps. My parents raised us properly. You know, one of the things that as a Marine Corps officer, I took an oath of office to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. commission in 2000, I went to law school for a reason. I went to Notre Dame, I got my law degree to do exactly what I'm doing today. Because I was more concerned about our domestic enemies to our constitution than I was necessarily to our foreign enemies. Unfortunately, I fear that we have a domestic enemy to our constitution presently occupying the White House. This administration has forced upon us unprecedented mandates. Never before in our nation's history did our government ever think that it could exercise such power or assumed that it had the authority to do so. You know, today marks the anniversary, the two-year anniversary of the signing of Obamacare. The moment that law was signed, I filed the first federal lawsuit, my colleague and I, challenging Obamacare in federal court in Michigan. I argued that case before the U.S. Court of Appeals, before the Sixth Circuit, against the Solicitor General. And we briefed that case right now in the Supreme Court as well. And as you know, argument's going to be uh, heard next week. So keep that in your prayers. Because part of that unconstitutional mandate is the contraception mandate that we're protesting here today. You know, our founding fathers, in their wisdom, created through our Constitution a federal government of limited and enumerated powers. And it did so for two primary reasons. One, to prevent tyranny. And two, to protect freedom. This administration is trashing our Constitution. This contraception mandate, I want to be clear about this. This is not just a contraception mandate, it's an abortion mandate. This mandate not only requires private citizens, private organizations, religious or otherwise, if you're a business owner that happens to want to follow your faith and, ex and the way you conduct your business, this affects you as well. It not only requires you to provide contraception, it requires sterilization, and it requires payment for abortifacients, which is chemical abortions. This is an abortion mandate. Yeah. 
And what many people probably don't realize is not only does it require you to provide those services, it requires you to provide counseling and education promoting contraception, sterilization, and abortifacients. So this is also abridging the right to freedom of speech because the government is compelling organizations, religious organizations, to engage in speech that violates their fundamental right to religious liberties. You know, in the end, this is not about contraception. It's about religious freedom. As you heard from all the speakers that stood up here today, a religious freedom that is enshrined in our Constitution. It's enshrined in our Declaration of Independence. It is what makes us up as Americans. It's at the core of our foundation. You know, I firmly believe that the Obama administration miscalculated on this one. Because as I look around here today, and we're seeing in all these major cities across the country, people are uniting. People of all faiths are uniting around this issue. In fact, this isn't just even a religious issue, it's an American issue. Yeah. Well, I, I recently founded the American Freedom Law Center to handle these cases. I work with, a, I've co-founded with a colleague of mine, David Yerushami, who's an Orthodox Jew in New York, so we describe ourselves as the nation's first authentic Judeo-Christian law firm. <laughs> He was, uh, he was my colleague that we filed the first federal lawsuit against Obamacare, and he and I have the privilege to represent Priest for Life in a federal lawsuit that we filed against this mandate in federal court in New York. You know, President Reagan famously stated, quote, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. <laughs> President Reagan understood that we as Americans are blessed to have the freedoms we enjoy today. And those freedoms are grounded in our Judeo-Christian heritage and moral foundation which are enshrined in our Constitution and Declaration of Independence. But President Reagan was also acutely aware that these freedoms are never more than one generation away from extinction. To ensure that we preserve our fundamental freedoms, first among those is our right to the free exercise of religion, we must fight for them at all cost. And that is precisely what we are all doing here today. This is what I do every single day as part of my organization to fight for our faith, to fight for our freedom. We can't let this end here. We need to go forward from this rally and fight for our faith, fight for our freedom every single day. Because if we don't, those freedoms will become extinct. That is our challenge today. Take the energy from this meeting. Take all that you've heard and go out there and fight for our freedoms every day. May God bless you and may God bless America. Yeah.